in this video we'll study about the bending of a beam and bending movement developed in a beam when it is bended so we know that that many the times this beam bends due to its self weight like that so you can imagine that when a beam bends then let us discuss this line and let us suppose that this line is the central line of the beam so we are uh, this line is called as neutral line this is due to the fact that you can imagine that at all the lines which are above this line this one a force is compressive force is developed you can imagine that if this beam is bended like that then this part is being compressed and this part the bottom part below this be, a neutral line is expanded so a force compressive force is developed in this part like that and a, a tensile force is developed in this part but uh, we can also say that this line which is above this neutral line is compressed or it is uh, its length decreases <clears throat> and that this line which is below this neutral line uh, expands and it its length increases so we can say that this neutral line is that line whose length remains constant for a small bending and we can say that let's suppose the radius of this neutral line is r and it is the center so let us suppose that radius of this neutral line is r <coughs> and the angle it has bended is theta <coughs> now you can see and uh, now let us assume that this distance is x and this is also x okay and this line the black line above this red line neutral line is the center of this part and this black line below this neutral line is the center of this part so you can see that <coughs> the radius till this point <coughs> is equal to r minus x <coughs> and the radius till this point is equal to r plus x <coughs> and the radius till neutral line is r <coughs> so you can see that the strain produced in any one of this line let us suppose that this line we are talking about and this line is expanded so the strain would be the extension upon original length now we know that the difference of radius of neutral line and this line is only x so the extra the extra elongation produced in this black line as compared to the neutral line is equal to uh, x this is let's suppose this is uh, delta l so strain produced will be x into theta you can imagine that the length of this line till this one is l in is r theta and the length of this line this one is r plus x theta so the change in the extra length of this line black line is x theta and the original length because initially this black line and this red line was of same length so we can say that initially let's suppose this is x that initially the length of this fixed portion was equal and it is equal to r theta it is due to the fact that we have assumed that neutral line does not have any extension and this is not a assumption in fact this is a fact that uh, the central line of this beam which is the neutral line if its mass distribution is uniform then it has no extension or compression so you can see that this theta will cancel out and a strain produced in it will be equal to x by r <coughs> okay now stress 
सो स्ट्रेस प्रोड्यूज इज स्ट्रेन इन टू गामा एंड स्ट्रेन इज एक्स बाय आर इन टू गामा एंड दिस स्ट्रेस इज फोर्स पर यूनिट एरिया नाउ लेट एस अज्यूम अ स्मॉल एरिया ओवर हेयर एंड दिस एरिया इज डी ए स्मॉल एरिया so the force produced in this area is obviously tensile because it is stretching this wire like that so this tensile force per unit area is equal to x by r into gamma and this force is equal to x by r into gamma into a which is da <coughs> okay so now uh, you can also see that if we assume a small area here then this force will be acting like that so this is f and this is f so this f force about this neutral line is producing a torque so torque of this force f is equal to f into the distance of this line from the neutral line which is x so this is x so it is x square gamma da by r this is the torque of Uh, this force, either this one or this one, about neutral line, and this is obviously small torque which we are talking about because this force is acting on a small area. So to calculate the total torque acting, d tau, in fact tau, we have to integrate this d tau, and integration of this d tau will be x square gamma. Let us uh, write it down as gamma by r into x square. d a okay so <clears throat> you can see that torque is gamma by r and this is x square d a now you should uh, remember the moment of inertia that it was d m into x square integration this is the moment of inertia of the body and if we replace the mass d m with d a small area then this term is called as <clears throat> the moment of area this is the moment of area so when we write down the moment of inertia as m r square then we can write down the moment of area is a r square okay so this is the summation of x square into da is the total moment of area okay now this torque will be equal to gamma by r now we know that we can write the total moment of inertia as mk square i is equal to mk square so the moment of area ig denotes the moment of area or it is also called as geometrical moment of inertia geometrical moment of inertia so this geometrical moment of inertia ig can be written as uh, a which is the area of the beam cross section area into k square where k is the radius of gyration so this is a into k square where a is the cross section of the beam r is the radius of neutral line this one and gamma is the young's modulus so this is the bending moment of a beam so bending moment of a beam is equal to gamma a k square by r now there is another term which is called as flexural rigidity so flexural flexural rigidity is equal to the bending moment when the radius of uh, the neutral line is unity so gamma a k square by 1 because r is equal to 1 so i'm again repeating the term flexural rigidity as the bending moment when the bending moment required to create a radius of that neutral line unity so this term is called as flexural rigidity 